Borderline Personality Disorder. Uh, hello all. In case you've been wondering, no, I am alive and well. I haven't gotten off to myself or anything. I haven't even been upset, but I haven't posted a video in two days now. Going on three. So I figured I should probably post a video before you all forget about me. Um, the reason I haven't posted a video is because my car decided to malfunction horribly malfunction and I've been working on that for the last two days still haven't got it fixed but I've narrowed out some things I've crossed some things off the checklist that could possibly be wrong with it and I have gotten it to a point where it runs I and mean, it can get me to work and back but I wouldn't trust it much you know I wouldn't want to go on a road trip with it right now. Hell, I wouldn't even want to get on the freeway with it right now. It's, it's good for a short little distance and then back home. So I got to get that fixed because I am planning on a road trip, but we'll see how that goes. But that's not the purpose of my video. You people don't give a shit about my car. Fuck, I don't even give a shit about my car. Or I would have done maintenance to it before it got all crappy. So, good people. What is this video going to be about? Marijuana. I could do a whole video on marijuana. Yes, I could. But no, this is not the marijuana video. <coughs> <coughs> But I've found something that is either a gift of a borderline or it just makes our condition more tragic. I haven't decided which one yet. And that would be the ability to spot a goddamn fucking fake. How are we able to spot a goddamn fake? Quite simply, because we don't have self-worth. Maybe I should back up and tell you the situation. I'm talking about like an internet fake. Uh, when somebody's trying to catfish you. Or catfish, I don't know the terminology, but... Uh, I know I'm not good with people. Social interaction. I'm going to be honest with you. It's really hard for me to tell you guys this, but... I haven't been out on a date or had adult relations in like four fucking years. Four. Four years. And it's gotten so bad that earlier today, I do like to take a little alone time, about 30 minutes to myself. I won't get into too much detail, but the internet is useful for material to find when you want some alone time. I spent two hours, two hours, looking through, like all of this porn on the internet, right? And then I realized I watched all the porn on the internet. Four years of not being with somebody has caused me to have watched all the porn on the internet. That's a lot of fucking porn, a lot. Trust me, if you got four years to dedicate yourself, you can watch all the porn on the internet, except for that really freaky stuff. I mean, I do have limits. I've not actually watched all the porn on the internet, but I've watched all the porn that doesn't get weird and just really disturbing. I mean, I don't want to watch, like, bestiality and little kids or something. I don't want to watch any of that. I haven't watched any of the gay porn, so there's a whole gay porn market out there that I haven't even touched on, but I'm not going to watch it. 
think my camera's gonna die. I think we gotta take a break for a second so I can charge it. Now the reason being is that dating and the whole mechanics behind that are something totally foreign to me. With my fear of rejection and abandonment in any way, I just don't like to compound the situation with all the rejections I'm going to get from all the females out there that run for me screaming and usually call the cops saying I'm trying to rape them if I even try to ask them their number or say hi. Now, I've not done online dating. I figure I'm, I'm young enough to be in the online dating stuff. Nobody wants to see their grandpa online. But, like I said, it's been, it's been quite a while. So I decided to uh, dive into this murky internet dating world, see what it was all about, check it out, right? So, I don't want to pay money for a dating site. I really don't believe that online dating works. Not for someone like me. But then again, I don't think regular dating works for someone like me. But at least regular dating, I pay for services given. And if you're willing to go out with me, I'm willing to buy you a dinner. 15 bucks. I fuck. Yeah, I'll take you to McDonald's. About 15 bucks. We use both. I'm gonna know by the end of that fucking shake if you're gonna make ride me or not. And if you're not, fuck yeah, I'll take you home. I'll oh, charge you gas money though. So I don't want to pay money for a dating site. So I decided I'd try out this tender that I've heard so much about. And so I did. I signed up for Tinder. And I've just kind of checked it sporadically. Well, the first two days I kind of checked it sporadically. I, I just would swipe right on everybody. Every chick in the area. Because I ain't picky, and it's a numbers game, and I figure my odds are shit, so might as well not leave out any potentials, right? I just swiped them all. Well, first two days of doing that, I had no matches. I was feeling like a loser. But that's a normal feeling for me. But then, on my third day, I did the same thing. I just swiped everyone in my area. And I wasn't even done swiping yet. And I had two messages. Or two likes. Just bing bing, just boom. And I'm like, wow, my game must have really fucking improved. That's awesome. And I got so and I was so nervous I, I didn't even check it. But I was like, ah, I just wanted to. So that brings us to the fourth day. Which would be today. <laughs> it is Saturday. I started it on Tuesday, so today is the fourth day. So I finally get up the courage to check these two messages I've gotten. And the first one says, Oh, hi. You know, it's spring break, and me and my friends decided to take a road trip. Here's my number. I was like, wow, that's kind of fast. I mean, I would understand if I was good looking or even looked good on paper, but I don't either way. I mean, I'm an ugly fuck. You can see this for yourself. I'm just an ugly fuck. And on paper, I don't look no better. It's like, if I could get my name, and then it's like, I make YouTube videos that suck. And then it's like, and I work at a shitty job that doesn't pay much. And I'm fucking older than dirt and single with no kids. I must be a class act. I'm a fucking winner. I'm a guy you want to fucking run out and date. You're going to totally fucking just give up on the whole fact that I'm an ugly fuck. Because of those credentials. Oh, yes, sir, Bob, I gotta catch that one. So 
So two fucking... Anyway, with this first girl giving me her fucking number so right away, it's just awfully suspicious. Awfully suspicious. Especially since her picture is like some 19-year-old co-ed. I've been watching porn four years. I can spot a fake. She looks like one of them porn girls. And I'm like, well, why does one of them porn girls want to be on a road trip? talking to me here in fucking podunk fucking Helford County. But then the suspicion got more when I went to the second girl and looked at her message and it said, Hi, I'm new in town. Me and my friends, because of spring break on a road trip, here's my number. And I look at her picture she looks like one of them porn girls, too. So in case all these really hot women have just decided that they want to get back at their daddy or something, and fuck the biggest loser they could find, I believe I might be being scanned. And I believe they also probably have to be friends and in the same car on the same road trip. Well, first girl one was better than first girl two. Because first girl two, when I text her back with, ah, spring break, road trip, you must be looking to get fucked up and fucked. I'm your man. That was my message to both of them after they gave me their number to try to flush them out a bit. All right, really, I was hoping they were on spring break and these girls really did want to get back at their daddy and want to fuck the biggest loser they could find, and I was definitely their guy. But I was, I was treading with caution, with caution. Wow. I text both of them, back to back. First girl first, second girl second. I like to do things in order. Now, the second girl texts me back first. Like right away, too fast, too fast. That's why I'm telling you, she was not a very good salesperson. And the message she sends me is a fucking website. So I very cautiously check out the website. And it's like some fucking prostitute ring or some shit. It's like fucking big ass fucking loser want to pay money to hook up with a chick that's not going to be the fucking chick he wants to hook up with. Give us your credit card number and we'll give you her address. Trust me, she's close. She's probably fucking next door. Just give us that credit card number. I, I won't pay to find out where you're at. Fuck you. I might be the biggest fucking loser in the fucking world, but I don't got to pay for sex. Fuck, you think I'm gonna go four years without just to start paying fucking now? I would have broken down in the six, seven month stage. That's when it's really hard. It's like drug addiction. You've been doing crack, methamphetamine, acid for fucking seven years and then you have to fucking stop. The first seven months that you're fucking clean, you're died, you'll do anything to get it. But after a year, that kind of, you still want it really, really bad, but that you make it a year, it's not as bad. You still want it. You make it two years, you still want it, but at the same time, not really, like, if you have to work for it, it's like, eh. I mean, if it's there, and then three years, fuck, you start forgetting about it completely. Like, doesn't really cross your mind. You still kind of want it. I mean, if you see people doing crack, you might be like, I remember when I was doing crack, yeah, that was good times, yeah, that's long, long ago now. You hit four motherfucking years, four? It's not worth your fucking time, it's just, it's, you know you're gonna suck at it anyway. I mean, you've forgotten how to even fucking smoke crack. So, you know, fucking people are gonna laugh at you, it's gonna be awkward. They probably won't want to share no more crack with you. And are you really going to fucking pay some guy in an alley? Or like, fuck it. Yeah, I can go get you crack. All you got to do is enter this credit card number. 
Then I'll run up the street. And I'll be right back. I promise. Just give me that credit card. Fuck that. F fuck you. Fuck you, Twitter scam girl. Both of ya. I may have been born yesterday, but I wasn't born. Yeah. See how you like that, Twitter bitches. So I don't know if a norm would have fallen for this scam. A norm in my situation. So let's take a norm who happens to be older than dirt, which I am, who is ugly as I am, just fucking ugly as fuck, and has nothing good on paper that would attract a woman. They do really shitty YouTube videos, and they work at a job that doesn't pay barely enough to fucking get them cigarettes and whiskey every two weeks. But it's a norm. And we all know how no well, we don't know, but we know how norms are different than us, right? So I'm thinking, like, these scams have to work, or else they wouldn't do them. And I've heard that this catfishing scam is big on all the social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tender. I mean, I'm surprised I haven't ran into it. Well, I actually, I have ran into it on Facebook, but I know it was really bad on MySpace if anyone remembers that. But, um, so these scams have to work. Just like the, uh, you know, you can make a million dollars sitting at your, sitting on your ass from home, you know, online fucking jobs. So this shit has to work for a norm. Or there wouldn't be the scams. So it could be a gift. Us borderlines could have the gift of not being roped into that shit because we have no self-worth. We know what we are. We look in the mirror and we, we don't see a false image of ourselves. And if we do, then we're, our false image is playing us down. It doesn't build us up, though. Our, but really, when I look in the mirror, I don't get any read off of it. I, I don't know about you. My borderline friends, when you look in the mirror and see your reflection, does it really register much to you? Because mine doesn't. I mean, I don't think I'm good looking, but I don't think I'm horrible looking. I, I know I'm an ugly piece of shit, but this is because of what people have told me. They've told me I'm an ugly piece of shit, and I, I rely on their opinion. But when I look in the mirror, I don't see an ugly piece of shit. I don't see a hot person either. I see just like a blankness. Like just blank. Kind of like I feel. I have no self-worth. So my reflection comes back to me in the same way I feel about myself. There's just nothing there. I'm thinking that my borderline friends will understand this. Or this might be something where one of my other conditions is causing it because we all know that if you're borderline you do suffer from other conditions as well. It's normally not just the one. Borderlines usually come with a whole bag of conditions. So please, borderlines, let me know. Is this a borderline thing, the reflection mirror? Or do I need to investigate what other mental illness might be causing that? Let me know. Comment section. Getting back on topic though. I lost my spot. Um, two tender girls, scam, nor norms, norms, that's what it was, norms. So norms, they have self-worth. When they look in the mirror, they definitely see an image of themselves. And it's either going to be really super positive or, I, I think most norms don't even think about, like, they like themselves. Like, they don't even have to think if they like themselves or love themselves or if they're good looking or not. I think every norm thinks they're the shit. They just walk around all day just like, I'm the shit. I'm the best in the world because I'm me. And nobody's better than me because I'm me and I have so much self-worth. And I love myself and everybody loves me and I'm me and the world is great. Oh, look, two porn looking girls on Tinder want me to pay my credit card so I can go watch them masturbate together. Well, since I'm me, it must be true. Here's my credit card number. So I think us lacking self-worth helps us from getting scammed. So there's one good thing to the 
kajillion problems that we suffer. But there's one good thing to borderline personality disorder. Or it's really, really fucking sad and tragic. Because I'm trying to keep an upbeat, like, somebody on one of my videos, and I'd like to thank you personally, but your name was so weird that I don't even know how to begin to pronounce it. These online names are weird. And it was really long and it had a bunch of weird, I, I'm sorry, but you know that I'm talking about you if you happen to be a subscriber and you know you got a weird name and I'm gonna tell you what you commented, but you gave me the name of somebody that had really good source material on borderline personality disorder, which kind of was like a scam because I went there and then it's like, oh, buy her book for a hundred and some odd fucking dollars so I can get good source material. But I didn't buy her fucking book, but I did research the fuck out of her for free, as much as I could for free. And I found out that she was the one that invented or pretty much designed the whole BDT treatment that us borderlines are supposed to do if we want to ever not be cured, but be stable. So then I looked into the DBT, which is basically a mix of religious beliefs and oh, lost it there. It's religious beliefs. Oh, and reprogramming techniques for your brain to repro. It's basically like brainwashing and making you think you're the victim. Now I'm going to do a whole fucking video on D or BDT. Or, it's so hard to fucking say, but you know, dialectical, you know what I'm talking about. There's going to be a whole video on that. This is not that video, but that comment made me look into this, which is why my videos have been more uplifting as of late, other than opposed to my beginning videos where I just ranted and raved and was pissed. Now I still have the same emotions and I'm still hate the world and I hate myself more than I hate the world. And I think all norms are heartless and sensitive bastards. And I still think we should pity them, but even that's changing a little bit because as I, I, like I said, the treatment video is another video and I don't really want to get into it. But the main thing is you, you have to look at life from a positive aspect. That's all I'll say. You're going to have to watch the next video. I'll do the next video. I'll tell you about all of that shit. Pretty much it's just thinking positive, which is why I'm not devastated by being scammed with the, well, I didn't get scammed, but I'm not devastated that Tinder girls tried to scam me. Normally I would be. This video would be a whole fucking different thing. It'd be, Tinder, fuck you, and the screen would be doing the 360 with dramatic music, and I'd be yelling into the screen, and then I'd show clips, and then, that's not what I'm trying to be about. But I still have all my negative thinking, even though I'm trying to think positive, and I'm using techniques that I'll get into in the next video and teach you guys how to think positive because I don't believe in the D, 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 I don't believe that treatment works, just like I don't believe drug rehab works. But you can mix, a, we'll get into it, but I've figured out something that's been working for me, so I'll share it with you next video. Uh, I gotta go see Batman vs Superman in like 10 minutes, so we gotta wrap this shit up. You guys gotta stop holding me the fuck up. Best movie coming out, woo! Yeah, in about three hours, I'll be like, fuck, that movie sucked. But anyway, we gotta wrap this shit up. So, if I was not doing these techniques, I would not have handled the situation as well because I know what I, I mean, I'm still thinking it, it's there. I'm just kind of trying to not let it overrule me, which is, from my point of view, this is the situation. I am an individual who loves everybody and wants everyone to be my friend. But nobody has ever liked me and everybody has always hated me and put me down. Always. No matter how hard I try to be their friend. And so I've given up on dating, I've given up on trying to have friends because they're just gonna fucking reject me. Or if they are my friend, they're gonna find out I have all these issues and abandon me. Or worst case scenario, they become my friend and they become a good friend. 
a good friend that won't leave. And then I'm going to fucking put them through so much pain. So I'm fucked, no matter what. So I think, okay, how about just meaningless fucking no commitment type shit? Get on Tinder. And I didn't like try to present myself as a nice guy either. I'm like, I'm a fucking, I'm an ugly fucking loser looking for sex. Been a long time. That's all I'm interested in. That way nobody gets hurt. I get some sex. They get some sex. We go away. We never see each other again. They don't get to like me. I don't feel rejected. It's easy. Easy peasy. Even though we all know that after I sleep with them, I'm going to like fall madly in love with them. Actually, you know, I'd probably have fallen madly in love with the tender girls had they been smoother with their game and actually like met face to face. Like if they like set up a meeting and then we met, then they're like, God, I want to fuck you so bad, but I just, I got this chastity belt and the only way to remove it is if you enter your credit card number right here and then I got to go get the key from right, but I'll be right back. That might have worked because then I'm emotionally invested. I, I, I've seen them. But, um, what the fuck? I gotta go watch Batman vs. Superman. You guys know what I'm talking about. That's all I gotta say.